How's it going guys? Honcho here with something a little bit different. The guys over at Micropros hooked me up with a copy of their game, Regiments, along with an early access build of their upcoming DLC titled Winds of Change. That's due to be coming out on the 16th of August. For those of you who don't know, Regiments is a 3D real-time strategy game that's based around 1989 on the scenario of the Cold War going hot. So a lot of you who play Squad or War Thunder will recognise a lot of the vehicles and weapons in play here. Now I've always been a huge RTS lover, with the first two games I remember playing is the original Command and Conquer Tiberian Dawn and Warcraft 2 The Dark Saga. Yes, Warcraft used to be an RTS game before it became the MMORPG giant that it is now. Over the years I played pretty much every single Command and Conquer including the Red Alert and General series and more to date games like Wargame Red Dragon and Warno. And don't forget, you've also got Broken Arrow, Call to Arms, World in Conflict and many other games are also in this genre now that I haven't even touched. But everything now seems to have really shifted their focus to the more multiplayer side of things and furthermore PvP, which is fine if you enjoy that and I do occasionally, but it generally brings out the sweatiest of metas. Whereas Regiments is focused on the single player experience. Now I played their original demo back in 2020, 2021, and whilst I enjoyed it, you could still tell it was kind of early days, but where they are now with the addition of the Winds of Change DLC, regiments have really cemented their own identity. Their first four main factions in the game was the Soviet Union, United States, and East and West Berlin. However, with the Winds of Change DLC, they've added in a bunch of new factions. Belgium, France, Great Britain, the Dutch, Canada, Czechoslovakia and Poland. And within these comes a bunch of divisions that focus on various things like armoured support or infantry. As to be expected, they're all split into the NATO and Warsaw Pact and all have their own unique vehicles and uniforms, all based on their realistic counterparts. On top of a few extra support features such as artillery, A-10 gun runs, cluster bombs for those of you who enjoy war crimes, and if you really, really like war crimes, there's also napalm. And it's lethal. All of the units have their own strengths and weaknesses, vehicles especially. If you can ambush an enemy tank unit from the rear, you will do considerably more damage than you will from the front. But it's not all about tank rushing, because the infantry which is attached to their mechanised and motorised brigades serve a great role too. Rather than in games such as Warno and the War Game series, where infantry separates from their motorised units and then takes shelter in various buildings for hard cover, in regiments, the infantry stays directly with their vehicles whilst dismounted. If left long enough, the infantry dig themselves into foxholes, which gives them a cover buff, and so do the vehicles, which eventually end up in hold down positions, thus greatly increasing their defensive capabilities. But by a quick press of the button, they just load up and they're on the move again. So your infantry in regiments are much much more mobile and reusable. I love pushing through tight areas with mechanised units with the infantry dismounted, especially with those that have handheld anti-tank weapons. They can be used to a truly devastating effect. You've also got long range artillery and mortars that can be used. These are great at flushing out lighter units that are entrenched. The mortars are especially useful when pushing the front lines and doing this. Now all of these units cost a set amount of command points and you only get a certain amount to deploy with. You know, a bit like the other main titles. However, you only have a set amount on the field at any one time. So once you've spent your allocated amount, that's as much as you can get. You can't just keep spamming out more units. However, to accompany this, there is a tactical retreat feature which I think is utterly genius. Now whether you've got a unit that's been smashed to bits, or you've overextended and you need to move your forces to the other side of the map, you can get them to retreat. What they do is they throw smoke and back out of the situation. It takes about 30 seconds, but if they successfully get out off the battlefield, you get your command points refunded and the units get restocked to a degree and are ready to redeploy when a small timer is up. Now naturally, if they do get destroyed at any time, your command points still do get freed up to deploy more units. But say if it's a scout unit and that vehicle gets destroyed again, you don't get any more. So trying to keep your units alive and bringing them back is far more valuable than just spanking them forwards and losing them. And this fits in really well with their new Warpath game mode that's been brought in. This is a procedurally generated campaign mode with more aggressive and more competent AI, and I can assure you they aren't joking. 
The way Warpath works is like a persistent campaign split up into 20 to 25 minute matches where you have to complete specific objectives. Just like the operations game mode already in game, you get to choose which divisions you want to take in to start with, and over the course of the campaign you can call in a few others to bolster the ranks, and aid you along the way. But another great feature that I like within regiments is before you start the mission you have to pick one of four what I like to call trait cards, and generally you get two good ones and two bad ones. So you have to use all four over the period of four battles, which means you have to choose strategically so you don't mess yourself over. I think my favourite battle type I've had within this Warpath game mode is when you've captured all of the objectives in the previous round and now you have to set up and defend them because man alive, the Warsaw Pact throws some units at you. And it's even harder if it's at night because you've got no idea where their mortars or artillery are at. So you really have to think strategically and carefully where you place your units to be at their best and their strongest. Vehicles like the M2 Bradleys with their infantry, I love putting on the edge of a town or forest. Get everyone dug in, with another division maybe a few hundred meters off to the west or east of them. So when an enemy vehicle gets spotted, you just see four toes get sent down range and it immediately sends the enemy vehicles into a state of panic. But you need to make sure that your guys have got a good line of sight, otherwise they won't be able to do anything until the enemies are pretty much on top of them. Leave a supply truck nearby so they keep restocked in ammo and watch them flatten anything that gets near. And when that truck runs dry, instead of driving it back to the resupply point, just get it to retreat and spawn it back in fully resupplied. Much faster. But again, you have to make sure you are covered against all threats, including the skies, so the AI will try multiple ways to make you fall back, which sometimes means a full arrowhead attack where everything gets thrown at you, including the kitchen sink. They'll even sometimes throw smoke artillery so your entrenched tanks can no longer see what they're doing. It's a great little use of an asset. Using your tactical assets during this can be really key. But you have to be careful because I've lost count how many times I've called in an A-10 airstrike onto enemy units only to lose sight of that unit and then they end up blue on bluing my own troops. The realism is getting uh, a bit too much here I think. But if you just want to hop on and have a game just blow stuff up, there's always the classic skirmish where you can choose through all of the available battalions and choose your opponent to come up against too. Honestly, I've had a blast playing this. Performance has been great even at 4K resolution. I love how detailed all of the units are. Artillery and ATGMs are certainly very, very strong within this. True to real life, I suppose, but the ATGMs riding up and over hills and through trees and sometimes even through a hill gets a little bit much. But honestly, if you guys enjoy RTS games with realistic units and something that's got more of an emphasis on single player, and if you enjoy the late Cold War period, this is a great game to pick up. Whether you're a complete novice or a weathered veteran, you're sure to enjoy this. And the Winds of Change DLC really does bring the game forward. If you guys want to see me cover more games like this, let me know what I should check out in the comments down below. Maybe I should start a little review series or something. Thank you all for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you on my next video. Good night.